Hello and welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today we are going to do another fun technique video. This time taking a look into bouquet effect cards and some tips and techniques how to make fun cards using this technique. So the key to this is any smooth paper that you can easily blend on and a shape stencil. Most bouquet designs are made with circles in different sizes, but I'm also gonna show you how you can do it in hearts in different sizes too to make a really fun effect. Now, usually what you'll do is you'll get a beautiful background and I'm gonna show you doing it in both distressed inks and in distressed oxides. Both will give you a slightly different look as well as the fact that the texture of it will be different. And to top it off, to make the fun bouquet effect, you're gonna use a white pigment ink to make your circles. And I'll also show you a reverse technique, which is a white panel with colored shapes. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna blend our background. So I'm starting with my Distress Oxides and I'm using the Orange Marmalade, the Worn Lipstick and the Wilted Violet. And I'm gonna make a nice faded almost ombre effect to this. One thing that's really nice doing this technique with the oxides is they're a lot creamier, so you do get a smoother blend and a more flawless blend. Whereas the distress are more transparent and more ink-like, so you may not get as much of a smooth transition in your colors. But as long as you mix the colors that work well together, they should not be muddy or fade horribly if you use the right techniques. Now, usually what you'll do to fade is you'll bring in the colors into each other, but you can always go back over to and blend them better by taking the opposite color and giving them blended back into each other. Now, we're going to slide this wilted violet in here. Darken this bottom part. And then we're going to go back in with the worn lipstick. And like I said, you're going to fade into it a little better than it was before. Now we're going to go one more time with the Spice Marmalade. So after we're going to do that, I'm going to heat set this panel to get it ready because we want these inks to be mostly dry. That way, when we put the pigment ink on there, it's not going wet on wet and it's not gonna bleed out into the color. So that way you get a nice, clean, sharp edge. So I'm gonna just make sure this is dry. So as you see, we got a nice blended panel. And I do have a few spots that I feel didn't perfectly blend, but it's not gonna to matter too much because we're gonna do some water splotches you can do this technique with or without water swatches. I decided for this one to do the water swatches only because it adds a more fun dimensional effect to the bouquet effect. Because then you get the smaller little specks in the background. And the bouquet effect is most usually used in photography. It's what, when you have a sparkle in the background and you kind of fade it, so that you get this blurry little spots of circles. That is the bouquet effect. Um, there's different types of bouquet effects in photography, but that is the most common one. And that is what we're trying to show here. That faded glistening sparkle that is in the background. You see that with Christmas lights a lot when they fade them. So they're just like soft little circles in the background. That is the effect. So we are going to take our unicorn white pigment ink from hero arts 
and I'm going to start with the biggest circle I have on my stencil. Now, if you don't have a circle stencil, you can also take a piece of acetate and die cut with some affinity dies or any other circle die that you have and get the same effect as having a stencil. So easy way, if you don't have a circle stencil or a heart stencil or any stencil to use, you can make your own. You can also do this on cardstock too, though I do find the acetate does work better for making a stencil only because it withstands the wet inks better. So I'm just going to layer these fun little circles here. And what's going to happen is we're going to take one size circle and then we're going to layer them with the other size circles. You can do as many sizes as you want. You can totally fill this page if you wanted to with a bunch of layered circles with the color behind it. Or you can just do it very minimal and just have a few. So it doesn't matter whatever you feel makes your design work. You can make it work out for you. Mine, I'm not going to go entirely crazy because I have seen some where they've done it to almost the point where the whole panel is full with just spots of color showing through, but you can do it either way. So I'm taking the next size circle and I'm going to layer them. And there's the smaller one and we're going to make that fun kind of bouquet effect. See, I decided not to do as much, only because I really want the colors in the background to show. That way you get a real good contrast of what's going on. I think it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to put a couple little small ones in the corner, just to fill the page a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. And look at that fun effect you get. All right, so I don't have the same colors in my Distress Oxide other than the Spice Marmalade. So I'm going to use Spice Marmalade. Picked Raspberry and Great Preserves for this one with the Distress Inks. Now, the thing with Distress Inks is they are not as creamy as the Oxides, so you sometimes will get harsher edges. So it's going to take a lot of more working inward and outward with the inks to get a more smoother panel. They also tend to be a little more bright and less muted when they dry. So definitely something to consider. But if you don't have Distress Oxides yet and you are only working with Distress Inks, this is a great way to get the same effect with what you have in your craft closet or craft drawer. Or you craft stuff. So I'm just going to come in here and see it's a little bit harder to work the colors into each other. But with this effect, you're not looking for a smooth panel, so it's not a big deal. But I will say that if you are doing a one more smooth blended panel, I would suggest the Distress Oxides. Only because of the creaminess and they go on top of each other better. So you get a more smooth color with it versus the Distress Inks. So here I'm coming in with the seedless preserves. So picked raspberry seedless preserves and spiced marmalade. And like I said, you're going to get less of a smooth panel, more of a kind of almost cloudier look because yours going to be spots are going to be darker than the others because they don't smooth out as well. But we're going to just go with it. And I'm not going to flick on this one. I'm just going to leave it alone because I want to show you without the flicks also. 
So we're going to take out our stencils and this time I'm going to do the hearts. Now I wanted to show that you don't have to just do circles. That you can do hearts, you can do squares, you can do different geometric designs, you can do all kinds of fun things. I think the heart is kind of fun. It's like nice for, you know, anniversary cards, birthday cards, because you have that heart kind of lovey feeling with the same effect. Classic, of course, would be with the circle. You can do it with stars. You can do it in all kinds of different ways. But it is a fun technique to use. And it is a very easy technique to do. And like I said, you could go totally crazy with different shapes. Go, go fill majority of this page with it and just keep on overlapping. You could do all kinds of things. And there are so many different ways to do it. it it's whatever feels comfortable to, comfortable to you and makes you feel that your piece is complete. Because you can see when you look at your piece, I think I have enough, or I need more. Sorry, we're a little off screen here. Let me just pull this up. All right, and I think that's plenty for this one. It's a very fun panel, just with. Distressed inks and that. And you can see the difference. There's not much of a difference. It's just a little bit smoother with the distressed oxides. So now I'm going to show you, show you what I call a reverse bouquet effect. Now, basically what I'm doing is I'm leaving the white as my background. And I'm going to use my ink colors to make the bouquet effect. And what's fun is you can do it all in one color. Or... If you really want to spice it up like I'm going to do, I'm going to do it in the three colors that I use in the background. So you can have fun with this. You can do it in different designs. You can do it in a cluster and make like an overlap design. Or you can do it in small clusters like we've been doing and make them your own. You can do it in a rainbow of colors. I've done cards where I use five or six colors in the shapes, use multiple shapes in it, and have some real good fun with it. I can't wait till I can get the um, new station by Wendy Beachy because stenciling with that looks like it's a breeze. And this technique would probably be a breeze with it because you can use the magnets on the magnetic board to hold down your stencil as you're plopping down that ink. Hopefully, it's been on back order. I'm hoping that I can get it hopefully in the next couple weeks so that I can actually show it to you guys and debut it in a video for you guys to see what you can actually do with it because it looks like a really nifty tool to have. It may not be your everyday mat, but it is a great mat for when you stencil and do fun stenciling techniques. And it even looks like it might be good for like placing things and holding them down while they dry glue. So another great thing that might be good for. All right, so I did the spice marmalade. I did the picked raspberry, and now I'm doing the sealess preserves in the other hearts and just giving the hearts a little overlapping effect with different colors. Isn't that fun? So another way, a good way to use stenciling to use your 
design, and it's like the reverse entirely of that. So now I'm going to do one in circles too, and I'm going to use my Distress Oxides this time to give you the same kind of look. Now these are going to go on a lot creamier, and oops, like I said, this is a moment where that station that she created would work so well because these stencils are very slippery, and I'm trying to hold them on there as well as I can without them slipping. Though every once in a while you may go over a stencil or it slips a little bit. But if you have that magnetic board, I bet you you could hold it down pretty well. And oops, I got a goof. See, sometimes I go over my stencil. But that's fine. We'll cover it up with another circle when we get to the next color. And you notice that I'm doing my color laying in lightest to darkest. It's the best way in this technique to do it. That way you can go over it with the dark color. And it won't be a big issue. So there's the spiced marmalade. Now I'm going to come in with the worn lipstick. And I'm just going to go in there and put some pink in there. You don't always have to do the circles full on. Getting them off the paper is really nice too. This would be a fun way to make balloons also. If you wanted to put little balloon ends on this and put strings, you can make a balloon effect with this too. So now I'm going to go for the Wilted Violet, and I'm going to cover my goof up with that. I tried to pick the darkest color I could, that way I can go over it. But a quick way to, if you make a goof, to clean it up. Now we're going to go over these couple little designs. Hmm, I want to leave one more layer of purple. There we go, right there. Just so it's balanced. And there you go. Now you got the circle one that looks very familiar to the one we made in the other effect. Now, I am going to glue these beautiful words, and these are Altenew's Simply Word dies, and I have Hello and Friend, and I die cut them out of some different colors of glitter cardstock. So I have this beautiful bright purple that I'm going to add. I'm going to put my little dot. And I'm going to use my Cricut mat to hold it down, and I did like a lavender kind of one in the hello and I also die cut out and I believe these are from Spellbinders so sweet and with love and I'm gonna put on these with the bright colors a strip of vellum some opaque vellum I'm gonna cut that down there we go make sure that's straight and then this one, I'm going to take the So Sweet and just figure out my placement. And I'll attach them with my Zig to a glue. Yeah, that will work. And then add them to my card to add some really fun sparkle and sentiment to it.
And just stick that also into the mat. And for the with love, I'm going to go horizontally and do the same thing with the vellum. A strip of vellum across it. And go right in the center with this kind of curly cue with love. And I got a couple pieces. I'm going to use my Spellbinders tool in one to get out. And then we're going to two way glue that also on there. And slide that under there also. Now that my glue has dried, we, I'm going to put my very colorful panels on white. And the ones that I did the reverse effect on, I'm going to put on a lavender cardstock card form. Only because I felt that the color needed to be on a color because it's so white already. And there's that one simple little note card. I'm going to embellish these with my magenta mermaid four millimeter sequins. These have that fun gold and pink, which is in the card as well as that. And I'm going to use one of them for the dot of my eye. And then add three on the corner just to give it a little bit of embellishment and sparkle. Touch that down a little bit so make sure they stuck all the way. And there we go. There's card number one done of that. So I'm going to take this one and also put this on another little lavender card form. Sure, we're stuck. And we're going to add the same color keep it in that pink family and this time i'm just going to add three for embellishment so for this one because there's so much color in the panel i figured it would really pop on white so i'm going to put this one with the word friend on it and i'm going to stick some of my transparent rhinestones. These are completely transparent and they will show the color behind them. These are in a dark purple, which is really pretty and goes very well with the word friend. I almost wish I had left the dot off because I could have added one there. And for this one, I was going to use my Blue Lagoon Mermaid, but I think I'm going to end up using my four millimeter matte lilac matte sequins instead because I think it'll go better with the lilac in the hello. Isn't that pretty? So, very simple little note cards, but you can see that fun effect in the background. And that makes all the difference. So I hope you really enjoyed seeing all these, these little card techniques and hopefully can find fun ways to use this technique in your card making. And you can see they make fun, bright cards. So if you like this video, please check out our last uploaded video as well as one specially curated just for you. And like always, we welcome you to click on this icon to like, subscribe, and ring for notifications, and check out our website as well as our Instagram and Facebook pages.